Let's look at this example. This is a simple chemical engineering example. We have a mixing tank with volume of 10 liter. Initially, it contains pure water, but then we start to introduce a saline solution into the tank through these two inlet pipes. Saline solution is basically water with salt in it. And we have two different flow rates. For inlet pipe one, the flow rate is two liter per hour and the saline concentration is 5 gram per liter, which means that for every liter of solution, 5 gram is salt, the remaining is water. And for inlet pipe 2, the flow rate is two, 3 liter per hour, and then the concentration of the saline solution of the salt is 2 gram per liter. And if we have something coming into an originally filled tank, that also means that we must have same amount of solution coming out from this outlet pipe. So from this outlet pipe, the outlet flow rate is 5 liter per hour, which is 2 liter plus 3 liter. And the concentration in the outlet will be the same as the concentration inside the tank if we assume that the tank is always well mixed. Th this means that when salt is introduced inside the tank, we don't have local concentration variation. Everywhere in the tank, the salt concentration is the same. And so is the concentration in the outlet pipe. Now, we already know that initially the salt concentration in the tank is zero. Over time, the concentration inside the tank is going to increase when we introduce more and more salt into the tank. Therefore, for this problem, we need to model this process for 12 hours. And we want to plot how the salt concentration inside the tank varies, changes with time. So let's start solving this problem. Um, very shortly, you will notice that this is very similar to the banking problems we worked on before. Um, because these are the same type of problem, the mass balance problem. We are essentially balancing mass or money. We're looking at how mass or money transfer from one way to another. So I set up some sales already uh, to save time. Here, uh, what I set up here are going to be constants. And what I set up here are going to be uh, variables that are changing. So I'm going to choose a step time of 0 0.1 hour for my analysis. This is similar to choosing one month in my banking problems before. And then the mass of total salt inputs during this step time is going to be a constant because I have constant flow rates in both of these two pipes, and I have constant concentrations in both of these two pipes. So that will be the total mass in the unit of gram coming into uh, the tank from these two pipes, and that equals to the flow rate of pipe one multiplied by the concentration. So concentration has a unit of gram per liter. The flow rate has, cons uh, has a unit of liter per hour, therefore, the product of these two will be in the unit of gram per hour, mass over time. Therefore, this multiplied by the step uh, size of the time. That's the total mass coming in in inlet pipe 1 during this 0 0.1 hour. Plus, we have another concentration from pipe 2 multiplied by its flow rate multiplied by the step time again. So that will be how much mass of salt coming into the tank from both of these two pipes within 0 0.1 hour. So these two are constants. Over here, I'm going to model this process for 12 hours with a step size of 0 0.1 hour. Actually, let me move it here. So this will be in the unit of hour again. So let me just drag to get my 12 hours. Now, the total mass of salt in the tank, that will be in the unit of gram. And initially, it's zero. The salt concentration in the tank will always be in the unit of gram per liter. That's a volumetric concentration. And this is always calculated from the total mass 
divided by the total volume, which is 10 liter. And I'm going to lock that because that's a constant. And then the total mass of salt leaving in the outlet pipe during the step time is again calculated by concentration, multiplied by the flow rate, which is a constant, multiplied by the step time, which is also a constant. All right, so for the next time cycle, this total mass of salt in the tank will equal to the previous mass plus what's coming in during 0 0.1 hour, and that's a constant, so we lock that, minus what's going out but initially this is a zero, but we still need to set up our formula this way, even though this is a zero. So concentration is calculated the same way. It's going to be the total mass, 1.6 gram now, divided by the total volume, 10 liter. The salt coming out is calculated the same way. So now we have a little bit of salt leaving the tank during the 0 0.1 hour. And that's going to be the, in the unit of gram as well. Okay, so, so let me do this once again. So for the next time period, the total mass of salt in the tank equals to the previous mass plus what's coming in, a constant, minus what's going out. And that's not a constant because this concentration in the outlet pipe changes all the time. Therefore, the total mass of salt in the outlet pipe will always change as well. So that's the new total mass. It keeps increasing. And these two I can just copy and paste. And then I can just copy and paste for the rest of my sheet. Okay, so it's very difficult to look at the data. So let me plot the time and the concentration. Insert. This is a theoretical model. Therefore, we use a smooth curve. I have just added the axis titles and the chart title for my chart. So along the x-axis, this is time in the unit of hour. And along the y-axis, this is the saline concentration inside the tank in the unit of gram per liter. So we have just used Excel to successfully model the saline concentration inside this tank as a function of time using a numerical method. So we can see that initially in the tank, because it contains pure water, the saline concentration is zero. And then the saline concentration increases, but not linearly. The initial increase is rapid, and the increase becomes more and more slowly. And eventually, you see this plateau. This is what we call a steady state. This means that at this point, the total mass of salt coming into the tank in these two pipes equals to the total mass of salt going out of the tank. And that's when we reach the steady state. If you don't believe me, we have just plotted the uh, process for 12 hours. Uh, we can continue to do the calculation for, say, maybe another 24 hours to for a total of 36 hours. As you can see, Starting from about 30 hours, you see how these numbers, the total mass concentration and the total mass in the uh, outlet, they just don't change anymore. When we modeled up to 12 hours at this point, according to our uh, simulation, the concentration inside the tank is 3.193 gram per liter, which is already very close to the steady state concentration of 3.2 gram per liter. This is another example of a problem that you can actually solve analytically as well. But the numerical method is easy to set up. And the graphing definitely helps to visualize the change of the saline concentration over time during this process.